Yes, people, welcome back to another episode of In Conversation with Rudy Samuel. Today, I got someone that is so cool, so amazing, so hardworking, so this, so that. And I said, oh, now, nah, wow. <laughs> let's come through together on my channel and let's have a nice conversation about something that means a lot to the both of us. Without any further delay, ladies and gents, I've got Anya Satu <laughs> right here on my this channel. This is so dramatic. That's what it is. I need to hype you. You know the vibes. Give me a fist pump. You know COVID times. Are you yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's so good to finally meet you, by the way. Yeah, actually, it's been, yeah. Yeah, it's been a long quite time. A yeah. We met on social media and we decided to like collaborate and talk about the life of a young Christian in today's time you know we're gonna uncover some topics some questions and just hopefully inspire and motivate fellow mm. christians you know on their journeys and stuff so i want to know when did you give your life to christ and what sort of shaped that decision okay um so i gave my life to christ in 2016 and i think that's it was just like a period of time when i just figured that like things really weren't working out for me and i know my mom had started like going to church frequently and you know they always say like a mother's prayers are like really powerful so i think to be honest that was like the only thing that actually moved me to making that decision of giving my life to christ um so i can say that i've been like a born again christian since 2016 and i do feel like that's been like the best decision i've ever made because when i look back today when i made that decision like five years ago six years ago um, I can't even imagine how my life would have been if I didn't accept Christ because yeah. just a lot is happening, you know, in this world. And I just truly believe that your only way to make it in this life is through Christ. And like, that's literally the only solution. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that was it for me. I think with me, um, I was always born or rather I always grew up in a Christian home. Um, it's like I was born and it was there. You know, mm. I didn't have a choice but to follow it. I was forced to go to church at times yeah i think what helped me uh with going to church was the sunday school friends i had okay so it's like okay i'll get through church because i know i'm gonna have time with my friends after or before church and stuff then i got baptized in 2016 i think april okay. 2016 and um yeah but i think i started getting into my own um way i think after I turned about 18, 19. Okay. Because then it was like I had to decide for myself. Yeah. You know, that was then I had to say, okay, mom is not going to do this for you anymore. You know, you have to take it seriously if you want to. If you don't want to, you know, you're going to go your own yeah. way. Yeah. But if you do, you do know that it, it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take energy. And going to Christ, your problems won't go away. Mm. But then you're able to, you know, deal better with your, with your problems when you have Christ. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, do you feel like your relationship with God became, like, a lot more personal in 2018? Um, I, can, I can't say that. Not necessarily 2018. When I turned 18, which was, I think, 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I was in matric. I'm old, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't um, look that old. Thank you. Uh, black <laughs> don't crack. Um, yeah, it got more serious because... Like I said, I had to decide for myself. Mm. You know, I had to make that decision for myself because like I said, you know, you were forced to go to church. You were forced mm. to go to all of these retreats. Having parents who were so involved in the church, mm. it's like, yo, if you don't go, they're going to talk bad about you. So in, in order to yeah. save their reputation, you go it's just so people can leave you, which is bad. And I think a lot of kids, especially Congolese kids, have had to deal with um, being in church because of mom and dad. Mm. Forget pastors' kids. That's a whole other situation i think a lot of christian kids had to deal with being in church because of, of mom and dad but yeah when i turned 18 19 it became more okay. a personal decision yeah, but yeah. you know i think it's quite interesting because like i think a lot of people have misconceptions of like um let's say if how do i explain this so like um people struggle to put the differences between you bo being born into like a christian family and you actually having a personal relationship yeah. with God. Like, those are two different things. 100%. Like, I can say for me, like, I was born into a Christian family. Like, we used to go to church. Like, since birth, everyone went to yeah, church. Yeah, yeah. And that was it, you know. But I think um, even, like, just praying was a thing. Reading mm -hmm. the Bible, going to church was a thing. I think it just became 
um, a lot more personal for me in 2016. That's when I was like, okay, listen, this is not about, I'm not going to church because my pastor told me to yeah. or because my parents forced me to, yeah. but this is a conscious decision that I'm making because I have seen God in my life. I've yeah. experienced God and I want to do this, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think like a lot of people just think that, um, that saves it's, you yeah. being in a, in a Christian home. Yeah, it does. That doesn't guarantee your salvation. Mm. Yeah, mm. and you are right. It is a relationship. Um, I mean, just like any relationship with your friends, platonic or romantic. You know, you you're gonna put time. You're gonna meet mm. up. You're gonna talk till like four in the morning. You're gonna go on dates. You're gonna do this and that. And when it comes to your relationship with Jesus, um, you take the time to know mm. Him, to know His character, to know His ways and His stories. And to know, you know, about stories in the Bible and stuff like that, which help you, you know, on your journey to, mm. to salvation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was the lockdown for you? <clears throat> Ooh, lockdown was... <laughs> I think for me, that was just... I feel like it needed to happen. You know, I, f I felt like before lockdown, it was just all about, you know, make ends meet, hustle, provide work hard and you know kill it and all these things that um society you know societal pressures so i think for me i got so stuck up in that um i can't say i went through a depression phase because that's quite heavy but i think that there was a time when i was like this is a lot for me i need a break and that's when lockdown happened and that's the time when i got an opportunity to look at my life look at my spiritual life and like okay listen like this pandemic is killing people and <clears throat> what the Bible says, you know, during like signs of end times is what we're experiencing now. So that was like, listen, you have to, to get your up. house in order. Yeah. You have to fix your life. Like Jesus can be coming any moment from now. So for me, that lockdown period was like, your God is in control. Like people are dying. Everything is happening so fast. So I really do think that the beginning of lockdown that happened in March really, um, fix my relationship with god because i did lose my way you know getting so caught up in school and yeah. meeting deadlines and working and whatever so i really do feel like that was necessary for me and it really really helped me a lot not to take things for granted mm -hmm. you know people were dying yeah, um yeah. so yeah that was it for me you know for me yeah it was one of or probably the most difficult thing i've ever had to endure in my life it mm. was so ugly the march time was disgusting for me I, I really hated it i'm such a routine guy okay and i had this specific routine when it came to going to church and stuff okay. like i i used to enjoy the routine i had uh when it came to going to church or going to work or going to whatever and it got taken away from me like this you know and i believe i did go through a period of depression in that time as well and but funnily, or funny enough, my relationship with God itself was actually good. Okay. Um, for some odd reason, I managed to, you know, um, spend time with God. I managed mm. to have a, a specific time dedicated to my walk with God, my relationship with God, and stuff like that. So that didn't suffer. Although now, today, in 2021, a year later, in March, I'm getting a bit tired of the online church and the online... Yeah. It's getting a bit tough now. I, I really miss the corporate worship, as they call it. But... Um, physically or mentally I was going through the worst I had to mourn so many things that I had mm. planned for the year which is is so difficult mm. and then I went back to the understanding that you're actually never in control you, and life and the hustle and the culture can make you feel like you're in control but you're actually really not you're not in control mm. of anything that you're doing you can think you, you have control and then COVID happens and it's like Actually, I'm actually not in control. Yeah. I want to go out to spa five minutes from my house, but I can't because if you get caught in level five, cops can arrest you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now we're in level one and people are like, yeah, whatever, you know, but it was so, so, so hard. What I didn't enjoy was the Christians at the time who were saying, use this time to get closer to God. What happened mm. before then? You know, what's going to happen now that we're free again? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of Christians were so hard on people mm. uh, during the time last year. And I think it, it's, it's very, very important to handle things with care, especially serious things like this, especially mm. for people who are maybe not as mature as you are, you know, with their faith. But... Yeah, no, lockdown was, was, was hard for me. Super, I think super, super hard. it's true. I think it was hard for a lot of people. And um, I feel like even for like non-Christians, 
but I think since we're talking about Christians, yeah. this it was a t- I feel like it was a test for Christians as Definitely, well. Yeah. Like you know, a lot of people just go to church every Sunday and mm-hmm. it seems as if they're like proper Christians, yeah. like they are serious, they're not joking. And you find that um in their homes or when it's just you in that room and God, they don't even pray, they don't even do whatever. But to other people, it seems like these people are like, you know, hectic Christians. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for me, it was just like, I don't think that your relationship with God should have been disturbed during lockdown because it, it shouldn't have, it should have been the same before. Like nothing should have changed just because yep. you're not going to church anymore. Yeah. It doesn't mean that now your relationship is affected. Of course, like you miss just praying together yeah. as like, you know, congregation Congregate, yeah. and whatever. But like, honestly speaking, like we did say that your relationship with God is personal. So that shouldn't really have affected your relationship with God because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it is personal. Yeah, definitely. But um, I think even just during the time of lockdown, there were pressures as well. Like people were saying, you know, you need to develop new skills and <laughs> all of that stuff. And time. it was just like, listen, maybe this is just a time for people to just to breathe, to relax, to just take time out. Like that pressure is just not necessary. And going back to social media pressures, um, I think we can admit that social media and the culture have played a massive role in the lack of faith in believers because of the instant results that we want in our lives, in our relationships, Mm. in our businesses, in our channels. Um, what do you say about that? I think oh, that's, that's quite tricky. Um, do you want to go? I, I'm still... I agree. I, I fully agree because it's like you, you're no longer working on the divine appointed time from okay. God or of God. Um, you want this thing now and you don't know if it's going to lead you to destruction or you don't know if it's going to lead you astray. But because you want it now and the culture says by 25 you should have this and that or by 27 you should have this and that you're willing to go fully mm. against your your morals and your values and your beliefs just to get that thing and then when you get that thing what then you know yeah it really takes you away from okay god what's your will for my life and it takes you from the understanding of the time and the season that you're in what if god wants you to be in a time of waiting mm, patience to learning. develop your patience to develop your you're, you're listening to his to his voice, but you're like, no, nah, God, I need this 1,000K subscribers. I, I need this mm. I need this job. I need this thing. I need this relationship. Do you know what I mean? So I really, I fully believe that social media and the, the culture has really played a role in the lack of faith in, in, in some believers. Definitely. I think it's, it's so, I feel like I've always said this, like as a Christian, you saying or saying like a prayer of, God, let God's will be done in my life. Like that is such a powerful statement that you can say because that means that even though you have plans for yourself, because you're saying, God, let your will be done, it may, your plans may not happen, you know, and that means that you're willing to put aside your plans and let God's plan intervene. And that's not always easy because like not knowing is tricky. Like Mm -hmm. if you say by the end of the year, I want to be married, you know, or I want to, my business needs to be established or whatever. And that doesn't happen. Like that can mess you up. You know, that's like, okay. So I think it also is important for like a child of God, like to say that, okay, if I want my business to be established by the end of the year, I'm just also having an open mind, you know, an open mind saying that let God's will be done. But at the end of the day, what happens? I know that, God's got me because God is always looking out mm-hmm, for me, mm-hmm. even though it's his will. Mm-hmm. So even if my business is not established by the end of the year, then I know that that's God's plan for me and that I'm, I'm happy about mm-hmm. it. So I think it's, it's just very important to have an open mind and just to say, okay, look, this is my goal. But then if this doesn't happen, then I know it's God's will. And I know that there's a reason why it didn't happen because God is always looking out for me and you know that's it so i think that's very important and those are real issues yeah, like serious serious those are serious issues and i feel like it's things like you know when people say no by this age you should yeah. be married by this age you should have like five businesses by this age you should do this and that like it's a lot yeah. you know just 
do your own thing yeah, just man. walk in your own path and it's like you can't be a control freak and be a believer in jesus or of jesus exactly you'll die exactly you'll die a painful death of stress and anxiety, anxiety. because you want to control this but god is like no nah, dog i don't want that for you or i don't want that for you now you know exactly yeah. and just also like measuring i think that also comes from it's it's a bad thing because you you tend to measure yourself and you're looking at someone else like measuring your success according to someone else's success yeah. like that is a bad thing because they also have their own journey <laughs> and you also have your own journey so yeah it's unnecessary i want to talk about um peer pressure and friends that are not necessarily on your journey how do you deal with that you know because you have your you have your beliefs you have your decisions that you have taken for you and your walk with christ how, how do you fit that in or how do your friends and your surroundings fit in in that way okay um that's quite a lot but i think <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm just someone that always like i protect my space i pr- protect my spirit so all my friends are believers like my very close friends are believers um and i feel like acquaintances uh, it's not really that deep um i just think that if we're going to be colleagues or acquaintances or whatever the case is then you can have your own beliefs like that's cool but don't impose anything on me like don't say like there was a time when um i was talking to someone recently and they were telling me that the time on my phone is similar to the angels that are aligned somewhere and whatever and i'm just like listen indeed you don't need to that's not necessary like your beliefs can stay with you don't force that onto me so as long as we have that understanding like that's okay um so i think with friends like that's it for me like i just all my friends are christians we all pray together we pray for each other yeah. and that sort of thing and we have the same spiritual understanding um so i would say in terms of peer pressure I don't really experience that because of my friends, but I can say that um but I think it's it's only fair to say that that is the case for me because we are all born again Christians, you know, and we don't put that pressure on each other and we know who we are in Christ. But for people who are still like trying to see if they're Christians or not or finding their feet and whatever, then that's when they'll experience peer pressure because now you have these friends that are like also not believers and yeah. you also you don't know what you believe in and so now you're all hanging out together yeah. <laughs> exactly and you're just doing all these things so i think that's my yeah. situation i think with me what i do is that i i try to make sure that if you know me um whether you're very close to me or whether you are somewhat close to me whether you're a christian or not you kind of know my beliefs and mm. my morals and my values so as to keep myself accountable so when i'm acting in a way that's not me they can call me out and say this is not you mm. you know let's say i start for example uh, celibacy or abstinence for example mm. if i go to someone and i'm st- yeah did I, I slept with that girl they're going to be like oh so all this time you were lying to us mm. and then you know your 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 self respect your standing all of that gets just you know gets broken down so i think it's good to be accountable to to people accountable to someone because in being accountable to those type of people they help you stay mm, you know on this course because i do have my very close people i have my mentor i have my 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 friends my sister who keep me you know in line but as soon as more than a few people know what you believe in and what you stand for and what you do and what you don't do they are able to keep you in line even without you telling them mm. you know we can go out and i can want to order a shot or something it's like this is not you what are you doing mm. and i'm like oh yeah yeah my bad my bad it's tough but it keeps you on you know okay. on 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 your path and you know before we close i just wanted to to cuz there's so much to to cover to but about, not, you know time yeah. um what's your advice for a young christian in today's time because we're young, young you know we like yeah. in our early tw- mid 20s <laughs> early 20s you know yeah what advice would you give to a young christian in today's time for me i'll just say i can't say um i can't put my experiences on other people but i can say that there's always something that's telling you not to do something and if you know that it's not right then don't do it and it's definitely not worth it as well like there's a scripture that says that um 
I can't really quote it as it says, but it says that um, what's the point of you losing your soul to gain the whole world? Like, it really isn't worth it because at the end of the day, you're going to be accountable for all that you did. And everything that you're going through now, everything that, you know, God says we should not do or like abstaining or not getting drunk or whatever the case is, it happens for a reason. It's there for a reason because God knows. And just read your Bible and pray and fast, guys. Yeah. It's, it's tough. You know, yeah. so that's what I would say, and just have a personal relationship with God. Um, it really is between you and God. You know, um, even just saying this, I know that there are like some topics like should women wear pants in mm. church or like wigs or like makeup in church. That's like a personal thing, you yeah. know, conviction. If you feel like it's okay for you to do, then do it. If you don't feel like it's okay, then don't do it. But I would say that even if However, you grew up in a church where, or in a family where you're forced to go to church. Your parents did that for a reason. Because I can say that the reason why we were forced to go to church and show up made played a role in who we are today. Yeah. I, I can say that. Mm-hmm. So listen to your parents as well. Yeah. For me, um, I'll just say it's so important to have the right people around you on this journey. You can have friends from many different beliefs, as I do but it's also very important to have the people in your beliefs that are on the same level as you or higher than you Mm. because you can feed off of each other and i think having a humble heart you can learn from anyone young Mm. or old black or white male or female and um seek knowledge and an understanding of of the word of god i think Mm. the the beginning books of proverbs speak a lot about understanding and knowledge and wisdom um those are the very very important things when it comes to the word of god and what god wants for you at this specific time and um yeah with that being said we've so come i just want to say to something the end of, yes, go ahead. <laughs> i just want to say um this is some like something that i discovered like um earlier on this year um i would say that don't be a christian just because you want to make it to heaven but i think you should be a christian so that other people can see Jesus through, through you. you yeah. So be a good person, show love. I like that. You That's know? so true because yeah. every time I meet someone for the first time or whatever, I, I want them to go with the peace of Jesus from the conversation that we have. Yeah. That's why I, I just prefer to be kind and genuine and, and cool and uplifting and encouraging to people because you never know that that one encounter with them can say, hey man, I wonder where he gets that from. I want some mm. of that. And then they mm. go on their own way to get to know Jesus in their own path the way you're supposed to do. Yeah. So yeah. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Anya Satsu Zizo for coming <laughs> through on my channel. Um, I shot a video with her on her channel, so the link will be in the description down below. So go see there, we shot something very cool, something fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Shout out to Leonie at the back of the camera. And I am your boy, Rudy Samuel, and I'm signing out.